Right, hello and welcome to Short and Sweet Revision. This is our third revision video for the um, relationship cluster and we're looking today at <gasps> Sonnet 43 by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Now, I know we haven't managed to put on too many of the poetry videos, but we're doing our best. Obviously, we've got revision going on in school and things yeah, like that. Yeah, we are doing our best and we're going to put this one on, but another thing you could look at, mm. and we've, we have put this on, um, on the, we've posted this a couple of times and on our Twitter feed that Mr. Baroff, another of our colleagues in school, has a YouTube channel and he's got all the poems on there. Yeah. So check out Mr. Baroff's channel, YouTube, and look at some of his revision uh, guides as well. They are really good. Yeah. And he is, he's in um, the head of our English department, so we work closely with him. Yeah. Um, so give them a check, yeah? yeah? But also, I think I just want to stress that. Don't stress. <laughs> Don't stress. Don't stress. Because at this point, especially with the exam tomorrow, just even just reading through the poems, getting yourself yeah. familiar with them is going to really help. So don't worry. You probably know a lot more than you, you think. At this yeah, stage. there's a lot of poems in the cluster, and, I, and you shouldn't go panicking tonight. Oh, no. I haven't done this. I haven't done this. Because remember, you're going to be doing a section as well on the unseen poem yeah. in section B. So if you can approach any poem... Um, you know, even if it's one you've not revised, you've not perhaps studied in class, and that one comes up, then just treat it the same as you've treated all the others. Yeah. Look at the form, the structure, the language, the meaning. Use all your skills. All your skills, and we'll talk you through um, the PowerPoint now as well. Okay, here. right, so let's get focused then. Um, Sonnet 43 by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Um, I quite like this because... Um, uh, Mr. Browning, what's it called? Robert Browning. Robert is it? Browning. Yeah. He, he wrote the Ballad of the Pied Piper, and I always like that. Uh, yes, he yeah. does. He he's used quite a bit in anthologies at GCSE. Yeah. Um, there is one of his on another page, but it's not in our cluster. No. Okay. Okay. So let's keep going then. Context. So um, again, you don't have to talk about this um, information in the exam, but I thought it's quite interesting to have a look at because oh, if we have a look back at Elizabeth Browning's um, history, she has. Um, She's been through quite a lot in her life, some real trauma, and her relationship with Robert Browning, he almost was like someone that kind of saved her. Mm -hmm. This marriage that, um, that they, they had, she, he took her away from her family, which um, had been through a lot of trauma. And I think this helps to reflect mm. the intensity of the love that we see in Sonnet 43. This is a really popular love poem. Yes. I've actually been to a wedding where this poem was, used, uh, was read out during the service it is of it is such a beautiful love poem because the love in it um the love that they're talking about is they're talking about it continuing after life into death yeah. and she was a very religious woman and there's a lot of religious references which we'll touch on as we go thing. through um, she didn't actually show her husband a lot of her poetry no. till a l later on in life but this one sonnet 43 is a love poem and it's really about this intense feeling of love that she has between for them him. yeah okay so um really worth looking at the, the structure of a sonnet miss i'll hand over to you because you're the expert well on a sonnet um petrarch was the originator of the sonnet form there's been uh, lots of other people taking on like shakespeare um lots of people have written sonnets even carol Ann duffy a more contemporary poet but she kind of puts a bit of a slant on them and um and kind of changes them a little bit but this is a love sonnet 14 lines three quatrains, a uh, rhyming couplet usually to finish, although this one hasn't got a, a rhyming couplet to finish. Uh, quatrains are four-line stanzas of any kind. It's written in iambic pentameter, uh, which consists of, of a line of five iambic feet. It's the da 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 It's like da, a da, heart, heart It's like right that, in. yes. Mm -hmm. uh, five unstressed and five stressed syllables. Okay, so that's when you're talking about structure, it's that it's the sonnet, and you need to understand the fourteen lines and these quatrains. And sonnets are love poems. Yes, yeah. Yeah. They're, yeah, they're normally themed around love. Good. Okay, so again, here's our annotations. We've um, highlighted some, but there are more that you could pick up on. Um, I just want to talk first about this um, opening line. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. Now, 
this is almost like a cliche now mm -hmm. because this line is so overused. Let me count. How do much do I love you? Let me count the ways. Tell me how much yeah. you love me. I mean, that's you know, that's what Real people say. Real typical, uh, you know, line that's reused. So it's like a cliche. And I want to. Can I just point out yeah. the punctuation there? You've got the question to start, and then the exclamation of "Let me count the ways" because yeah. there are so many. And punctuation is important because we've got hyphens and yeah. you know the, they show the kind of pause for thought. It's a thought process. Yeah. So we start with this direct address. So let me. How do I love thee? So it's the you. It's to, it's yeah. Straight talking straight it's to, to personal, to the, yeah. like you've said there. Very personal. We then have uh, we carry on this assonance when we the next line. I love thee to the depth and breadth and height. And you can re you can almost hear this rhythm, can't you? Going you on can. in the sound. That's because it's the structure of it is this iambic pentameter. Yeah. Depth and breadth, uh, assonance, when the vowel sounds rhyme. Depth and breadth, it's, you know, it's that vowel sound of the e eh sound uh, that's assonance. Good. Okay, and then we have a metaphor here. And this is all about how she's describing, she's almost giving um, her love a, a, a sort of size of how much she loves him. Okay, and uh, Miss, I think you know a lot about this. The well, I ideal um, grace, this is important. Well, this is her religious uh, references. She's mentioned soul um, and the ends of being an ideal grace. So she, she loves him in life, but she is saying that she will love him after death and when their souls come together. So it's, it's that strong, the love, that she thinks it will transcend life and they will be yeah. reunited in death. Their love will be reunited yeah. in death. If you wanted to put in really simple terms, it's like someone going, oh, I love you this much and yes. this much. And she's going, I love you this. And it's so expansive, you know, her, she yeah. loves him so much. It goes beyond this human um It capacity. becomes it's ethereal. A it's kind of yes. otherworldly, this love. I mean, look at the last line. <laughs> the last line is, I shall but love thee better after death and she is a religious person so yeah. she's saying that their love in the afterlife will be even stronger yeah. than it is on earth okay moving on again we've got enjambment so that's just one example but you can spot it throughout so this is where the line continues okay it doesn't end right at where the the, the line doesn't it goes over it and we can see that the enjambment helps to show us that her love cannot be contained you could talk about this structure it runs over onto the next line yes it does you know <coughs> the amount that she loves him and what she's talking about continues and it, it's uh, look at how she says she loves him by the day by sun and candlelight at night I mean, those words aren't there, but that's what that means, yeah. that she loves him day and night. So uh, we've got time here, haven't we? A, a, a sort of theme of time, of how much, like, over an expanse of time she yes. loves him. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, we keep, um, keep going on going here. So we've got repetition. So you can see in the orange, we've got I love thee repeated, but so there's something quite unique here when we've got I love thee um, right next to each other. Miss, you want to talk about Okay, this? now this, um, this phrase, I love thee, is what we call anaphoric. It means that it's it, that this is actually the dominant figure of speech in this poem, I love thee. And this repetition builds the rhythm while reinforcing the theme. So it's building the rhythm of the poem yeah. leading up to the end, but it's also the theme of the poem is love. Um, if you use words like anaphoric and you put it into your answer if this poem comes up in yeah. the exam, don't just drop it in. You need to explain what it means. You yeah. need to explain why the poet has used it there. You can't just say um, there is an example of anaphoric being used in the poem. You need to say, I love thee is anaphoric, meaning it is repeated at the beginning of several uh, consecutive lines for emphasis. But and why they've used why it. They've why they've used it, it to reinforce this rhythm and the theme. Yeah. And again, the, the way that she's repeated, I love thee, after each one it has a, a reason um, why she loves him. So after each one it's a different idea so yes. i love thee three freely as men strive for right i love thee purely so it's almost listing all the ways in which she loves him again this repetition of i love thee emphasizes mm -hmm. her love this is what it's doing and again she's she's linking the um the words here right and praise and ideal grace these are uh, the reason they've got uh, capital letters is that they are words to do with religion um, and she look at all the words to do with religion. You have passion in here, which isn't just to do with the love, but yeah. the religious religion as well. And then she says, doesn't she, in my old griefs and with my childhood's faith, 
that's a reference to her faith, yeah. to her, you know, the way oh, she was... Oh, we've got one here. Here we go. Oh, sorry. Go on. Yeah, so it does. It says relig religious references. I can't even speak today, as Miss was just saying. And I think sort of words being cut, up, cut off at the bottom. Sorry about this. But she loves him with the intense emotion her faith gave her as a child. That's right. Okay, so... Is that the missing word, yeah, Miss? Yeah, child. child. I, we can see it, but we don't think you'll be able to. Yeah, so if you remember, we looked at some of the context of her life. I think her faith really meant something to mm -hmm. her throughout her life. It got her through a lot. And now, this love that she has for Robert Browning, is she feels the same intensity. Okay. That she did for yeah. when she first embraced her, her faith. Religion, which her is religion. vitally important to her. And yeah. that's why she's used so many religious references within the poem. I would, if, I mean, depending on what the question is, you would have to reference all of these. You've got saints, God, yeah. faith. All of the, the soul, all of these words, it's only 14 lines, but yeah. look at the language in there. Language to do with love, language to do with faith, yeah. with religion. Um, as Miss uh, mentioned before, the ending, like, I shall but love thee better after death. So it's showing how even after she's dead, she will continue to love him. Her love has it, it expanded, uh, covered a lifetime. I think a key word on that last line is shall. Shall. I shall so this but is, that's love the thee. future. The future, yeah. yes. Um, and one thing I think we need to pick up here, comparing to other poems, this one is about the intensity of love. However, mm. there's a real sort of purity to it. There is no sexual references. No. There is no sort of um, link to, the, to physical no. at all. It's all about... Emotion and also and spiritual. And spiritual, you know, yes. Linking to the religion. How much... You, so it's, it's about this purity um, and of love and being together over a lifetime. Okay, so it, so if you think about some of the other poems mm. when we've got, um, you know, I don't know, Coy Mistress is very sexual, in Paris with you, things yeah. like that. This yeah. is different. This is the, yeah. Um, also, I'm going to pick up, Miss, on the bit that you've, um, you said earlier about yeah. this, I shall but love thee better after death. Mm. Um, this love continues, and I'm going back to your context page, yeah. because the last bullet point on there was that she died in his, her husband's arms. Oh on the context page so, so it links uh, well i noticed yeah. it so here you know this is a true love yeah. poem but i think linking to the context she really believed that robert mm. browning saved it because she actually had mm. ill health but her life um extended a bit with with this relationship mm. so i truly mm. believe she linked that her religion her love mm. you know it, it's i i really like this one i like this one yeah. as well yeah Okay, now, uh, moving on, we're going to just summarise everything um, that we've talked about. Obviously, there's a lot more that you can think about with the language, but some of the key things, this metaphor, mm. the linking in with the religious, repetition of that, I love the uh, religious references. Um, the structure, it's a sonnet, you need to know that. What does that mean? Yeah. Um, theme and meaning, we've got this ro romantic love, quality of love. And now the comparison, which is the key skill in the exam, everybody. It is. And we've put uh, three poems here. But, of course, it does depend on what the question is. Yeah. But you are asked to compare. Compare. So we've put Ghazal here, which is intense feelings of love. Sonic 116, which is true love. And Hour, which is... Um, passion that's about spending time together and yeah. not wasting any time um but depend like we say depending on the question you know the whole cluster is yeah. about relationships it depends what they are asking you about yeah. because there are certain poems that go together easier and we we put some suggestions there but you may decide you another yes, poem yeah. would suit and that's absolutely fine of course but we're going to leave you again with um an exam style question so this is a typical of what you'll come up against um tomorrow so compare how the feelings of love oh, don't sound like it, is presented it's fine compare how the sonnet, feeling of love yeah of, of love in sonnet 43 and one other poem um so you're thinking about love okay how is it presented so we know this is a love poem Okay, and you need to think about some of the other poems you can compare it to. Okay, and don't forget it is compare, so yeah. you can use language like um, however, therefore, or Simil like similarly, wise, like, yes, as all with, those. In yeah. the same way, or in contrast. Use those connectives, that will really help you. It will. Okay.
okay and quite see that's just for your c grade but again if you want to go for the higher levels what you develop your ideas yeah. um really develop your points on the language and the structure and your interpretation of what yes what's going on. Yeah. yeah you'll have 45 minutes on this question and um, i would suggest five minutes planning yes and do your planning on your answer sheet remember don't put it on the question paper yeah. it's not marked but let the examiner see your plan yeah. now we're nearly out of time miss so this is our last one really yeah we don't it? have time for any more but we want to say thank you for all the comments and really hope it's been worthwhile and hope it goes well yeah. tomorrow we will be putting more on yeah. ready for next year um, or for the English exams yeah. as well that are coming up soon um, so good luck to you all good if you if you've revised properly you'll be